A January 6th rioter dubbed Sedition Panda by online sleuths because of the costume he wore during the attack has just been convicted. Jesse James Rumson, seen here wearing a panda head, was found guilty of eight charges, including assaulting a police officer. Rumson had tried to claim during his testimony he didn't realize the Capitol building was restricted, even though evidence showed him jumping over a railing and joining the mob inside after a window on one of the doors was smashed. Well, today, Democrats on the Senate Judiciary Committee are requesting a meeting with Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts, demanding that Justice Samuel Alito recuse himself from cases related to the January 6th attack. Alito still hasn't commented about the controversy over his home displaying an appeal to heaven flag, a symbol that has links to the Stop the Seal movement, just like the inverted flag displayed at another of his properties. He blamed his wife for the first one. Republicans, though, say all of this is being blown out of proportion. This is just uh, terrible, terrible to see these, uh, these political, politically motivated threats against the Supreme Court. I just think Democrats are determined to harass members of the Supreme Court. People who are judges on the Supreme Courts have personal lives, they have families, and I don't think they're necessarily responsible for everything their families do or say. Uh, so. I know Justice Alito, and um, I have confidence in him. If uh, the issue of recusal comes up, as I've heard that issue being raised, the Supreme Court has protocol for that. Joining me now, Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal, who represents Connecticut and is a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Always good to talk to you, Senator. Is this being blown out of proportion? Are Democrats just harassing Supreme Court justices? You know, I think that the sense of hypocrisy here is so high. Far from harassing Justice Alito, we're simply pointing out these political statements, which clearly indicate bias and the gifts and luxury travel and other benefits that he and Justice Thomas have received, all of it in clear violation of any possible code of ethics. The Supreme Court has no code of ethics. It must have one. And the Republican colleagues who have just appeared saying it's harassment or trivial ought to be supporting a code of ethics. They also should be supporting an effort to have Justice Alito offer an explanation. He owes it to the Congress and to the American people to explain whether he had anything to do or any knowledge about these flags, which are political statements in support of Trump and the insurrection and clearly require that he recuse himself, that is, step aside in any judgments of the Supreme Court involving Donald Trump or the insurrection. Justice Alito is proving himself to be unfit for the Supreme Court. As I mentioned, Senator, Justice Alito blamed the first flag on his wife. The second one, some Republicans have pointed out there's no problem because it was George Washington's flag. In fact, Speaker Mike Johnson currently has that flag displayed outside of his office. So what do you say to that argument? I think that argument is patently and blatantly disingenuous. Any photographs of the insurrection show that flag. It has become the emblem of the Stop the Steal movement. It is now a symbol of a Christian vision of how the United States ought to be governed and what it ought to be doing. It's no longer George Washington's flag. And clearly, it is a political statement. Now, the Speaker of the House of Representatives may have that flag outside his door, but he's a politician. The Supreme Court is supposed to be above politics and above reproach. And clearly, Justice Alito and Justice Thomas are dragging the court down. You know, I am so angry because I have real respect for the Supreme Court. I argued four cases in front of the Supreme Court when I was attorney general of my state of Connecticut. I was a law clerk to a Supreme Court justice. The, this kind of misconduct would have been unthinkable in that era. And it is the reason why approval and trust and credibility for the Supreme Court are plummeting. Now, a lot of people may say, maybe my colleagues, that doesn't matter. But in fact, it matters 
a lot. In fact, it is critical because the Supreme Court has no armies, no police force. The reason why its orders are obeyed is because of its credibility and trust. And uh, those features are being destroyed by these two justices and perhaps others insofar as they are complicit. So I think we ought to summon Chief Justice Roberts. He has a moral and institutional responsibility here. His legacy is going to be a court that is demeaned and degraded by this kind of misconduct. And I feel we ought to, if necessary, subpoena him to come before the court and take additional action if necessary. It, it, he has seemed to want to uh, push forward something on, in the ethical front, on the ethical front. So has, for that matter, conservative justice Amy Coney Barrett. Do you think something gets done? Is it going to take congressional action, whether it's calling him in to testify, whether it's the bill that you've pushed but have not had success getting through? I've pushed for a enforceable code of ethics. The Supreme Court has only a statement of principles that the Chief Justice have issued, has issued. They're not binding and they're very vague. And I think the Judicial Conference has a role. There ought to be an inspector general for the Judicial Conference, which is the body created by the Congress to police other judges insofar as they commit misconduct. You know, the Supreme Court is the only court federally in the country and maybe the only court in the entire nation that has no code of conduct. And it issues decisions as part of a shadow docket without explanation, orders without any disclosure of the number of justices on either side. It has become totally non-transparent, and it is a body composed of men and women appointed for life, not elected, and unaccountable, completely unaccountable to the American people. So I do think Congress must step in. But again, the responsibility rests on the colleagues that you have just shown who are so dismissive of this misconduct. It is unconscionable and it makes them complicit in this kind of misconduct. Senator Richard Blumenthal, on a holiday weekend, we really do appreciate you taking the time to, to come in and talk about this important issue. Uh, we, we thank you.